welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> Alright, so this video is going to be about things I regret purchasing or products that I regret purchasing. I don't have many. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Alright, so I have seven different things that I've purchased that I'll never repurchase again. So if you guys would like to see the things that I will never purchase again, then just keep watching. Alright, so let's get into it. The first thing I'm going to show you guys, and it is not because I don't like this product. I think that the color is off. Maybe it's because it's summertime and it hasn't, it just doesn't sit, not that it doesn't sit well, but that it's just not matching my skin the way that I would like it to. And not only that, after putting it on, um, if you don't set it with a powder, it is very tacky. Like, what I'm talking about is a foundation, so when you touch it, it's just, it has like that sticky feel to it. Almost like a lip gloss that's sticky, but on your face. So if you have your hair out, your hair's like sticking to it and stuff like that. What I'm talking about here is the CoverGirl Outlast Stay Luminous Foundation. I did do a review on this, um back in the beginning of July and I did like the way it sat on my skin at first but as I continued to wear it I realized how it became how it was tacky and how my hair would stick to it and how I would have to finish it with um, a setting powder which is fine I don't mind doing that but the more I used it the more I realized I just really am not feeling this foundation right now again the way it sits on my skin and the tackiness of it I'm not a huge fan so this is the first product that I regret purchasing, which is sad because I really wanted to like that product. The next product I didn't purchase, I actually got it from a subscription box, but honestly this product is, I want to say $35. If something for $35 better rock my world, and this product did not. I'm glad I didn't spend the money on this, but... I just wanted to share this with you guys so that if you think about buying it, then just remember what I said. I mean, obviously, this is my opinion. You might love this product or I don't know. I personally don't. The product I'm talking about is greater than MDM Flow. It's that mascara that I got in a boxy charm, I believe it was. This retails for $35. I've used it quite a few times since getting it in my subscription, I think it was last month. So I've literally used this throughout the whole month, not every day, but at least three times a week. And I just do not like this mascara. I feel like it doesn't make my lashes, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know, full, like really full, it's the way I like them to be. Um, I'll show you guys, I know in a previous video I guys showed you. But if you guys look, see all the product down at the bottom of the brush? Like, why is that clump there? And there's a big clump on the tip of it. It's just, I don't like it. I just don't like it. Um, I, I would never, ever, ever in a million years pay $35 for that mascara. Honestly, I wouldn't pay $5 for that mascara. Sorry for those of you who like it. That's my opinion. I don't. All right, the next product, again, I'm probably going to get some serious hate about it because so many people love this product. I don't, and I'm going to tell you guys why. It is the Cinema Secrets Makeup Brush Cleaner. I don't like it. I got a smaller bottle, as you can see. I've used a little bit of it on the top. I wanted this because I feel like it would be so much easier when doing makeup on clients to just spot clean the brush real quick since it dries so quickly, which it does. It dries very quick. The odor of this product is so strong that if you're not doing this outside or near like a whole bunch of open windows, you're going to like get a headache because the smell is so intense. It says it smells like vanilla. I don't think it smells like vanilla. It's just so super strong, like such a chemically smell. Not only that, it does clean your brushes pretty well, but I cleaned one of my very favorite flat top kabuki brushes with it, and I've had this brush for months. I'm talking since, I don't know, maybe like the beginning of the year, January or so, and the very first time I ever cleaned this brush with this cleaner, all the hairs of my brush came out. I was so upset and so mad at this product for destroying my brush. So this is something I will never ever purchase again. I'm actually 
probably just gonna throw it away. All right, the next product I'm going to talk about is the NARS Translucent Crystal Light Reflecting Setting Powder. This is expensive. This is an expensive powder and the sales rep told me that there would be no flashback, which I should have known better. It is a white translucent powder. And I set it under my concealer and I took a picture later on in the day and it was like pfft, reverse raccoon. I was so upset. I was like, I spent all this money on this powder. She said it wouldn't have a flashback. I should have known better. I just should have. I don't think that you should really be able to use white translucent powder because most of them do have a flashback. I mean, some don't, don't get me wrong, but a lot of them do. So my tip to you guys, I use like a beige or a banana powder since it's not white and I don't ever get flashbacks. All right, so the next product is, and I've seen, I've done this in my toss or take video or keep or toss video. Anyway, I have kept it. It is the e.l.f. setting spray. I don't like this as a setting spray, as I've said in previous videos. So in that aspect, I regret buying it. I'll never buy it for a setting spray. I probably won't buy this ever again. But what I do use this as is to wet the my makeup brushes when I want to have a more intense color for my eyeshadows. So I'll spray that to wet my makeup brushes to put on my shadows. But besides that, I would never buy this as a setting spray. I just don't like the way it sits on my skin. Another thing that I got is a Jordana Twist and Shine Moisture Lip Balm Stain. This is in the number one Nude Chic. I've used this quite a bit too. I'm going to show you guys. There it is. That's a swatch for it. You see how shiny it is? I thought this was really pretty at first. I don't like the way it looks on my lips. This might work for a lot of other people. I almost look washed out. Like my lips look really, really washed out. But yet, when I turn a certain way, there's a shine. I just, I don't know. I just don't like it. I'll never buy it again. So, And last but not least, this is an older product. I've had this, um, I think I got this back in December. It's from American Beauty. It is a medium deep warm foundation. I got this before I realized really what my skin tone was. I am not a warm complexion person. I'm more of a neutral to cool. Um, so that's probably why this foundation, that's what it looks like. That's where the sponge was supposed to be. And there's the foundation. That's why the foundation just didn't look right on my skin. It matched my skin, but it just, it just didn't look right. And I think that's because it has the warm undertones to it. Oops, sorry guys. The warm undertones to it. And I'm just not really that much of a warm undertone person. I'm better with the cools and neutrals. So guys, that is all the products right now that I regret buying. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have used any of these products, let me know down below what you guys thought of them. Did you like them? Did you not like them? I wouldn't be surprised if you love half of these and some of these are going to be like, you're crazy, that brush cleaner is amazing, or that NARS translucent powder is phenomenal. I'm sorry. I personally don't like them. I'll never buy them again. So... Alright guys, until next time, I'll see you in my next video. Bye! What I'm talking about is the no mirror, no look makeup challenge.